it was pure jubilation. <laughs> People behind me were crying. You know, you had fathers, sons, even kids as young as eight, nine, ten years old. And like I said, I was looking at them and thinking, how can they really feel this hurt from 55 years? But they really do. You feel like this story of Germany being such a jinx for England has been passed down from generation to generation. And everyone was super nervous going into this one, even though I kept even telling the fans, look, I think England should have this on paper. I mean, they do have such a deep squad. You feel that momentum is with them. They are at Wembley, even though we know Germany has such a good record at Wembley. But something in the air was different this time. And the fans, even though that they are known for being pessimistic and giving up on the team whenever things are not going their way, they were absolutely singing from start to finish, constantly edging the players back on, telling them to press, telling Raheem Sterling, just shoot. And I think that that second goal from Harry Kane, I mean, so many people just stood with their jaws on the floor. They couldn't even believe that they could score not one, but two goals, not just in a big competition right now, the way things have been going, knowing Gareth Southgate likes to play it safe, but especially against Germany. And it was unbelievable scenes at full time. And I, I think it's a, a game that I will forever remember. And I felt like I was English for the day. Uh, Alexis, just give us a sense of occasion, how it's going to build now between now and Saturday. Well, that's the thing. I still think even though we saw a brilliant performance today in terms of getting the win and dismissing this whole jinx that is Germany for England, and we do see that they are going to get Ukraine in that quarterfinal. I'm pretty sure England fans do fancy their chances against Ukraine and as well up against Denmark or Czech Republic. And it does look like a quote-unquote easy route for England to the final. There are still 50-50 and the pessimism, I'm sure, is going <laughs> to creep back in come tomorrow, as England fans do say, because they have said or some have already even told me that, look, things have been going perfect for England, but almost a little too perfect. And it will be very much like England to find a banana peel that is in the form of Ukraine or Czech Republic or Denmark. But really and truly, I think today um, a lot of people restored their faith again in Gareth Southgate because you mentioned about how a lot of people were saying that it was too negative, that starting lineup once again. They really wanted to go and press the Germans and kind of beat them at their game. And even though they did it, they were like, you know what? Stop being so safe. They really want a blow out game where they can say four or five goals but I think Gareth Southgate just reiterated that look he's not here for the entertainment he's here for the wins they don't have to be cute but look he's down for tournament football and he's not changing anytime soon he knows how to work his team he knows them better than any of us know them and I think they have full trust in their manager so it is 50-50 still but I think England fans are finally letting themselves feel a bit more hope that they could be in that final back here at Wembley and look I spoke to Raheem Sterling and he told me once it's at Wembley, that's my backyard. I'm scoring. Alexis Nunes, as always, a thank you very much. Just a reminder as to why this was so significant when you look at the rivalry between these two sides. England haven't beat Germany since 1966. What happened then, Stevie? What happened in 1966? Hmm. 19, um... I think it was my fourth birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the, the World Cup final, England what winning. Was it? This, this game, if you weren't, if you didn't have a, if you didn't have a dog in the race, it wasn't great at all. Considering all the drama we saw on Monday mm. and all the excitement, this was all about you felt not making a mistake, and that was pretty much told by the Gareth Southgate starting eleven, where there were eight defensively minded mm. players and only three attackers. Yep. So overall, do we give credit? We've got to give credit, don't we, to Gareth Southgate for getting it right? Or if he'd gone attacking, could they have won this with less, uh, with less of a worry? Listen, when, you, when, when you're put in a situation and you win the game, I don't care whether you stick 11 people on the line, if you win the game, then you've done what's needed to win the game, as daft as that may sound. Right. Mm. But I've got to tell you, if, if this game was destined to be 2-0, I'm glad Harry Kane scored because... Gareth Southgate, the way he set this team up, is not set up to help Harry Kane. You know, he's hardly, he's hardly had any opportunities so far in this tournament, and he gets one real one and he scores. Right. So I was glad to see that. But I tell you what, he's not doing him any favours. You know, you said it. You've got eight players, pretty much you know their, their job is to not let in and pass. Mm. And basically you're leaving three to get on with. Well, two, because Harry Kane... Has got, has got two centre-backs on his back the whole time. Yeah. So you're relying on two players. One in a, one's a kid, Saka. And then, of course, you've got Sterling, who had a bad end to the season with City, but in this tournament has been fantastic. That's his, what, third goal in four games. So having said all that, 
they're still winning. Yeah. And I'm betting you that the team that steps on the field in the quarterfinal right. is going to be the same. Just out of interest, if we spoke to Gareth Southgate before the game, would he have said, look, here's my plan up to 70 minutes. I'm going to then introduce Jack Grealish just to mix things up a little bit up top. And that's exactly what happened. Or does that kind of, is that in-game decisions? Well, considering that he's done that before and it's been successful, then it's not a bad thing to fall back on. Right. I mean, his coaching staff can say, you know what, this team we're starting is good enough to win this game. If things are not going well or we need a goal, or we need to, to get forward quicker, or, or if it's, a, it's something we have to do moving forward, he's the first guy off the bench. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.